Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see the second home game ever played in this beautiful new building at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It's the Bills getting set to take on the Falcons. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. A moment ago, here was the scene. The Falcons coming out from their tunnel to the roar of all the folks here in Atlanta. We're ready for football as these Falcons get set to match up with the Buffalo Bills. And hello again, everybody. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon here in the booth. And, Chuck, you take a look at this matchup. I don't know if it's going to be one in the trenches from the quarterbacks out, whatever. It's going to be a good game. Oh, without a doubt. I can't wait to see the big fellas have an impact. We're always spotlighting those wide receivers and quarterbacks and running backs and even the defensive backs. But the big guys, I can't wait to see which one tilts the balance for their team. It's the first weekend of autumn, and the NFL is in full swing as off we go on EA Sports. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Out come the Buffalo Bills. Out comes Tyrod Taylor. Threw for just 125 yards in week two. It sacked three times. Did make some plays with his legs, as he usually does. But he had a chance late, Charles, to hit Zay Jones for the winner. Couldn't quite connect. And when you're playing the Carolina Panthers, you have to hit on those because their defense is tough aggressive and you remember last year when they had all the struggles in the secondary because of the young kids well they're growing up and playing better now that was a great opportunity for them zay jones the rookie receiver unable to capitalize because he would have caught it about the one maybe even would have gotten in and they could have upset the carolina panthers now the first carry for LaShawn mccoy and he'll get this one up to the 26 just a yard on the pickup there and it'll bring up a second and nine well let's take a look here at the bills offense well the one thing we do know about buffalo they love to run the football number one the nfl in 2016 in rushing yardage expect that to continue but look for an upgrade in the passing game if they add that they could be really dangerous so second and nine the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here Again, it's McCoy. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. On the defensive front, Charles, as you see the starters for Atlanta, they could be without Vic Beasley for up to a month. They're calling it a, a slight hamstring tear. And remember, he led the league in sacks last year. 15 and a half, Pro Bowl, All-Pro player in his second year out of Clemson. Atlanta plan to maximize him this season by taking him out of the starting lineup on defense because they're going to use the rookie, Duke Riley, to play his spot, but bring him in in passing situations so he'd be fresher and quicker when he went after the quarterback. They snap it at one. Now it's Taylor. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. So the offense lining up first and ten. Now Taylor going to hand this one off to McCoy. And he showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. That's guy who keeps defensive coordinators up at night, doesn't he? Shady McCoy, because you never know when he's going to pop a big one. Since 2013, 22 games where he's rushed for over 100 yards. But really struggled week two of the NFL season, nine yards on 12 carries. Well, that's tough sledding when you go against the Carolina Panthers defensive front led by K.K. Short. Second and just one. Hey, here we go. 
They'll go again to McCoy. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. From midfield now, here's Taylor. And his throw is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Andre Holmes that time. And now it's second down. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. the play fake. Here's Taylor. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Charles Clay is tied in the intended target, and it's third down. The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long, though. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. It's caught, Jones. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. Zay Jones, a second round pick from East Carolina. Some thought could have been a first round pick from East Carolina. High volume guy at East Carolina. I mean, the big time catch, 158 of them in 2016. And he's an NFL legacy. His father, a longtime linebacker in the league. Fresh set of downs here. Oh, let's go. Now a play fake here on first down. Going to drop this off to McCoy, complete. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up second down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. On second down, it's McCoy. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive. And normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let them down a little bit. They yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff them for a loss. They'll try to capitalize on play number 11 of this opening drive. Third and goal. From the gun, it's Taylor. And this is going to be incomplete. I better raise my voice a little bit here because one thing we can already tell, even in the first year in the league with this new stadium, it's going to get loud in this place. Yeah, the old place was loud, but I think we're getting a sense that this place is going to be louder. Yeah, they're riding that momentum of that 2016 team that finished their year in the Super Bowl. And Hauschka's kick is good. And the Bills' opening drive yields three. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense.
Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. Andre Roberts now to return it. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Matt Ryan brings the 2-0 Atlanta Falcons out there right now, and he's 22 straight games now with a passing touchdown, longest active streak in the league. Still a long way, though, if he wants to catch Drew Brees' record of 54. Long way, but I wonder if Matt Ryan's even concerned about that because of all the weapons that surround him on offense. I think he believes if they just stay healthy, someone will catch a touchdown pass, whether it's Julio Jones, right, Taylor Gabriel. Right, Austin Hooper at tight end, <laughs> Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman out of the backfield. He's got guys he can fling it to. They go play action here on first down. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. As we see the starters for Atlanta, when we were talking about Matt Ryan as he came onto the field, you mentioned all the weapons around him, specific to the backfield, Freeman and Coleman. That's a great one-two combo, isn't it? It really is, and it's one of those where either one of them could get all of the carries and be the star, but they're both more effective if they actually replace each other and give each other a little bit of time to rest, especially for Devontae Freeman. When Coleman comes in and spells him, Freeman really becomes that much better of a player because he's fresher. And Tevin Coleman, I just wonder, one day will he want his own team where he will get the ball more? Well, for now, they're both good against the Packers. They combine for three scores. A Falcon first down, Ryan to his young tight end, Hooper. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On first and ten, it's Ryan. Caught on the right side by Jones. A very solid gain of 27. I don't mean to jump in on your partner, but they didn't waste any time getting downfield, did they? I mean, a nice big play there. Three plays, three successful plays in plus territory. Now this defense on its heels a bit. It seems like they had something targeted there, doesn't it? It's like, okay, we've got a matchup we like coming right out of the gate. Let's go ahead and get right to it. First down, Ryan. This will be caught inside the 10. And he's brought down, but not before reaching the 8-yard line. That one, 28 yards on the ground. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sidelines thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll run here with Freeman. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. So the myth has been shattered. Every cornerback in the league is not just a cover corner. Some of them will stick their nose in there and make plays exactly as we just saw there. A big loss suffered by the offense after that nice tackle. Ryan now off the bootleg. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Taylor Gabriel, an 11-yard touchdown. And the 
Falcons have taken the early lead. I do believe we came here to see a game, didn't we? And it looks like he's running what we call routes versus air. You just go out there with your offensive unit and throw the football with no defense. He's five for five on the opening drive. He was on his game there for drive number one, but... My only thing is now he can't go any higher than that. He was so perfect. Can he do it again later? Yeah, all he cares about right now is making it 10 for 10, 15 for 15. <laughs> Keeping that going. And he feels like he can get it done. So the drive there took six plays. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. Here's Bosher to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And the Bills getting set to go. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I've never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. A fake to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. Looking downfield for Jones. Thrown across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Keanu Neal, and he'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield stripe. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot, and if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there, and sure enough, this one's going the other way. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Well, what do you think? You get the ball off the turnover near the middle of the field. You take a shot here on the first play? You know I'm big on that. I love when I have great field position after a turnover. I feel like I might have them a little bit off balance. I prefer to take a shot, but a lot of coaches will tell you you only do it if you trust the guy who's got the football in his hand. Meaning, if it's not there, he won't force it downfield and maybe turn it into an interception. He'll go to the check down, go to a second option, and go ahead and take the play that's in front of him. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. Second down following the incompletion. Ryan on the handoff. It's Freeman. And they go backwards here. Losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. They lost two there. And it's third down. Brad, wasn't that long ago that the guy playing that spot was an outside linebacker type of a guy. Now, as a defensive end, how about the speed that he used to get into the backfield and make the play? Extra DB on the field for the Bills here on third down. Yeah, maybe think and pass. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. And Jones has it over the middle. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. 
Give him 35 yards there on the third down conversion. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. And he's got it. And eventually stopped just shy of the goal line right around the two. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now it's Ryan. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Julio Jones, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons will extend their lead. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it's a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Here's Bryant for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. The drive summary that time, five plays. And the Falcons score to cap it off. Here's Bosher to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Not easy being a rookie left tackle in this league, and there they got it for the penalty. Not easy at all. Think about what you're dealing with every game you play. Ostensibly, the best pass rusher is over you on every snap. I'd be a little jumpy myself. this up just short of the 30 but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle nice move he wipes out the penalty yardage with a good run to get it back to second and seven 
for McCoy in the last seven years, five of them over 1,000 yards. Underrated in how strong he is through the hole, but the best part of his game, open field, where he makes a whole lot of people miss. In 2016, he was seventh in the league in rushing yardage. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Taylor with a give to McCoy. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Pretty shifty footwork, but didn't buy him much. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. The Bills on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. Here it's third and two. Taylor now to throw on third down. And he'll check this one down to McCoy. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. So the offense has it first and 10. back at the 40. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up and run support, made a big-time tackle. Might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. Second down, here's Taylor. And that will be incomplete. They couldn't hook up on what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with this third down play as we've hit the end of quarter one. 14-3, that's our score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. Shotgun, it's Taylor. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Deion Jones in there to get him for a loss of three, and it'll be fourth down. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Colton Schmidt, fourth-year man from UC Davis, on to punt it away. Back deep here, Andre Roberts. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. It's player spotlight time, and we focus that spotlight on the quarterback, Matt Ryan. He's showing off that arm, showing it off very well. They've got the lead. Don't forget, though, about the protection he's had. The protection's been good. And I'll guarantee you, he hasn't forgotten about it at all because that's keeping him clean in the pocket, allowing him to step into throws and make those deep passes come true. I mean, it's just been beautiful for him to do. 
But guess what? In the huddle, on the sidelines, guaranteed he's thanking those big guys up front for keeping him safe. I have a feeling he made him buy dinner. <laughs> Indeed, entertaining to relive some of those deep balls. Mel Ryan on first down. And this one complete to Levine Toilolo. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. On second down, Freeman. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It's a loss of two, now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to see? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. for the Falcon first down. Partner, our parents always told us that relationships were going to be important in life. Taylor Gabriel knew Kyle Shanahan in Cleveland before he was the offensive coordinator in Atlanta. Boy, that payoff for the Falcons picking him up. And last year, he had more touchdowns, actually, than Julio Jones. He had seven. Jones had six. And good parental advice there, Mr. Davis. to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. Oh, incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it there. And it'll be second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that could be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. Play action. It's Ryan. He's got his man on the crossing route. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. An incredible play there. They do get big yardage, but they're still stopped a yard or two short, and it's fourth down. 
They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Matt Bosher, seventh-year man from Miami, on to punt. Back deep for the Bills, Brandon Tate. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. the Bills. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again, so it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And tough starting field position here. First carry for Patrick DeMarco. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven yard line. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. A good solid game there on first down, but the defense has to be happy. They didn't let it pop for anything bigger. This is McCord, and he will lose yardage here back to his own six. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll make it third down. When you put together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. The Bills on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. Now Taylor. And Taylor cannot escape. He goes down to the end zone. And Charles, at some point, you can't keep worrying about big play. Can this be perfect? You just have to get the ball out of the end zone. And in the offensive huddle, that was discussed when they called the play. Just get out of the end zone. But you know what's interesting? A lot of the times in the defensive huddle, they actually call a set and then say at the end of it, get a safety. So it's preached, it's coached, it's thought about. Free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. Oh, he takes it in, doesn't let it bounce. He takes it at the two. Matt Ryan in the offense heading back onto the field. And he's been good. Two first half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence does a great deal for your team, gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back.
Now Ryan on second down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. is Freeman on first and ten. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A really nice pickup of 14 yards and it moves the sticks. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. up second. Second down, Ryan. His throw incomplete. The Falcons on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and 15. From the gun, it's Ryan. He finds Roberts complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Ryan. He hits his target. It's the tight end, Toilolo. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. The Falcons averaged 34 points a game last year. Tops in the NFL with that powerful offense. And they're already looking for more. Here as they've got it first and 10. On the counter, Devontae Freeman. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Devontae Freeman, 15 yards. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. Drew up the counter there. It worked. They're glad they drew up the counter. And a lot of times what you're trying to do is just simply get the defense moving in one direction. It doesn't take much. Even one step's enough. Get them going in one direction and then cut back against the grain and let your running back finish it off and get the work done. 
Bryant now to tack on the extra point. And that one pushes the lead up to an even 20. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends in a touchdown run from Devontae Freeman. Sure to kick it away. On the return, it's Brandon Tate. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26 yard line. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And last time they surrendered the safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you've got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. Play action here on first down. Over the middle complete. It's Jones. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 on that one and a Bills first down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, Bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Let's go! Five, nine. Five, nine. Now a play fake here on first down. Throw left side complete. That's Jones. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. A big play there. 57 yards. And his guys get the quick strike touchdown. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts. All right, because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Steven Hauschka for the point after. It's up, it's true, as they get back in it a bit here. It's now 23 to 10. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Matt Ryan and the offense heading back onto the field. They've got the lead. He's a big reason why, looking sharp so far. And as we travel around the league, we see quarterbacks get it done in a variety of ways. But today's NFL does tell us one thing. If that guy doesn't play well, 
their team's not going to win. And right now, he's got his team in the lead. And now they'll look to extend that lead. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. And his throw here is incomplete. Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And some room to maneuver. And they get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The Falcons on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and four. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop him cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you're talking about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. And what a big time play there. Here's Matt Bosher now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to Atlanta right after this timeout. When halftime rolls around in just a bit, we'll send you to Orlando. You will hear the dulcet tones of Mr. Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Does dulcet mean good? Yeah, it's just something that broadcasters say. It's got to be good, right? It's got to be you good. You tell me. Well, it's got to be good if Larry's doing it. Here's Matt Bosher now as he'll kick it away for the second time. by him call that 49 yards on the punt they do get seven back on the return and the Bills will take over the football with a first and ten out comes Zay Jones with the rest of his offense as they take the field he's up near 100 yards now here in the second quarter but his team's down through no fault of his own I mean <laughs> what a nice game he's having so far they've got to keep finding ways to get him the football don't get away from that figure out where things are going wrong with the rest of the team. He'll be hoping to hit that 100-yard mark on this drive. Let's go. One, nine. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. Going to drop this off to McCoy, complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll make it second down. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. Right side, Tate, and he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. I know we just saw a nice throw and catch, but how about the big guys up front that buying that time. time? Yeah, that's exactly what they did. They created time and allowed the space to happen, and it turned into a really nice play. Taylor on first down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Holmes. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. 
as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. So here we go, first and ten now. Throwing again, it's Taylor. He'll set up the screen to McCoy. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. takes the timeout and they are back out and ready to rock. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Again, it's Taylor. This caught. Reception by Holmes. And down inside the 15 he goes. Bill's passing game, getting them down the field. They've got another first down. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. Taylor on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. And here comes play number six on this drive. Second and 10 now, it's Taylor. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying, no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and 10. They've got to get after him one more time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. Taylor will throw again. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And Hauschka's kick is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So a field goal here. They're still down, but they put a dip into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead.
Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. time running down they go down to a knee so we are at halftime here in Atlanta with the Falcons out in front as we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports halftime report Larry thanks Brandon and welcome to the EA halftime report I'm Larry Ridley let's take a look back at the first half the Falcons are happy to be sitting in the locker room with the lead the Bills just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game all right, let's get it going. Here's the first half highlights. Falcons with the football midway through the first. Matt Ryan on the connection with Taylor Gabriel. It ends up working for a touchdown. The lead grows to four. First and ten, the pass ends up being picked off. Neal since happy to come away with the pick, ending the drive. Offense now with the shot after the interception. Jones is by himself here, and it ends up working for a touchdown. Falcons go up by 11. Now first and 10, Freeman's able to spin away here, and he counts off the seven-play drive with the score. That takes the lead up to 20. First and 10, Taylor finds the rookie from East Carolina, Zay Jones. And this will go all the way for a touchdown, as that gets it down to 13-10. And with that, we'll head back to Atlanta, where Brandon and Charles are on the call. Okay, Larry, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on Here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. They go play action with Ryan. And he finds a man with a crossing round. A really good pickup of 28 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They run. Devontae Freeman. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 
They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. So it'll be first down here after the run. Ryan. Looking deep for Julio. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. And now a 10th carry for Freeman. Freeman a first down and more. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Here's Coleman on the toss. He takes it to the 15. A nice display of power, but not a ton to show for it. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage. I really liked what he did there. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. And he's got his star receiver. It's Jones for the Falcon touchdown. Julio Jones. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Falcons will extend their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. That time, a six-play drive. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. Bosher to kick it away. This one taken from the seven. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. So here's the Bills offense. Now they get ready for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. We'll see what they have up their sleeve. They'll throw on first down with Taylor. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Jordan Matthews, the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. 
When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength. And he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. Here's McCoy. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Come on, let's go! On third down, Taylor. And that is incomplete. Here's Colton Schmidt now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Now they were good last time out with a touchdown drive. This go around, it's not going to be very easy starting from inside their own five. But they shouldn't be daunted by it. You work on this the entire offseason. You work on it in practice. It's called coming out session. Start the ball inside the five, start on the five on the ten. They should be ready to go. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. They'll run with Freeman here to begin the drive. And he's able to get this up just shy of the 15. They needed some breathing room. He gave it to him. 11 yards and a first down. I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now, huh? Had him pinned back there deep, give up that run. Can't be happy. Yeah, whatever was whatever is in his mind right now, we probably couldn't say over the air. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now Ryan. This one complete to Mohamed Sanu. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know they got a completion there. But I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. The left side completion to Jones. And they do finally get him, but he takes it to the 25. A big play there, Ryan to Jones, 45 yards. I really don't think that Julio Jones could be happier right now. Plenty of catch opportunities in this game. He's converted them, and his team's winning. And Matt Ryan's happy, too, to have Julio Jones on the other side of these. Yeah, you know, a lot of times we talk about breaking teams down, and oftentimes it's through a running game. These two, they can break a team down through the air. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Ramon Humber from that outside linebacker spot. He's able to get in there for a loss of nine. 
Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. Fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And this is caught at the eight. And he is out of bounds, but not before taking this down to the eight. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. And now a first down following that long game. Here's Coleman. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. On second down, here's Ryan. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Only able to pick up two, and that leads us to third and goal. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. This offense so far on third down, they've converted three out of five thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground, and now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. So on fourth down, off goes Matt Ryan, and on is another Matt, Matt Bryant. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And the 42-year-old veteran's kick is up and good. And that will extend their lead even further. And a long way to go. They started that drive at their own three, and they scored three from it. What an excellent job by an offense that could have very easily just said, okay, let's just take a few plays safe, punt the ball away, and play some defense. Instead, they found a way to attack and put themselves in position to put points on the board. Sure to kick it away. This one taken from the seven. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The Bills offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. 
Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. A fake to McCoy, now it's Taylor. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. It's Desmond Trufant, and they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. So their woes on offense continue. That's the second pick thrown here in the third quarter. And we know it was ill-advised, but that was an opportunity to help them get back into the game. Instead, he throws another interception, and now their task is even tougher. Heading back onto the field, here's a look at Devontae Freeman now. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And, of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. They'll try to get the ground game going with Freeman. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Second down following the run. From midfield now, here's Ryan. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. He was looking for Mohamed Sanu there. And it's third down. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You've got to cash in and get some points. They go play action now. Ryan giving it out left side to Sanu. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. And now out come the Bills. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They'll try and get the running game going with McCoy. And he'll be taken down at the 18. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher, a really nice run. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. They'll run 
it with McCoy. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. McCoy looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. Now they'll throw with Taylor. Man open right side, it's the tight end Clay. And he's gonna be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Holding offense. So apparently some grabbing of the jersey there on the O-line. Yeah, just look in the interior and that's where the penalty occurred. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Come on, let's go. On second down, Taylor. He targets Jordan Matthews, and it's caught. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. A big gain there after going backwards, and that'll lead to a third down. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted three times and eight chances. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll run it now out of the gun. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. Final minute now of the third quarter. They go play action here on first down. He's going to air one out. And almost intercepted. It would have been his second pick of the game. Instead, it'll be second down. And attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Ten yards still left on second down. to throw again. Taylor over the middle, it's Holmes. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. The Bills on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This will be third and six. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. And that would not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. 
The Bills have the football, but they trail here as we begin quarter number four. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Gotta try it here. He's back to throw. And it is incomplete. The Bills drive stalls out on fourth down. And the Falcons will take control of the football in great field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. Getting set to go again on offense, we get a peek at Julio Jones now. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Now it's Freeman. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. Swings it out to the flat for Freeman. A nice move he had, but can't break away. And he's brought down just inside the 30. Well, a clear running situation. Try to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit him over the top. The Falcons on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This time they face a third and two. This is Freeman. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Freeman again, a first down carry. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Coleman now. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him six on the play. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gun. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. On third down. That's Coleman, and he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Now the offense lining up first and 10. Tight, tight. 
Now Freeman, he's been busy today. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, they'll run with Freeman. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Devontae Freeman with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends in a touchdown run from Devontae Freeman. Here's Bosher to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. First down, throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Matthews, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Second and 10, it's Taylor again. Going to drop this off to McCoy, complete. A very good move, but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. It's a gain of seven, and that'll bring up a third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The Bills on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. Here, Here it's third and three. <laughs> Taylor now to throw on third down. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. And that'll set them back five. Still All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Here we go. 
As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And he hits his man, Matthews. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Give him 23 yards on the pickup. And they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. From midfield now, here's Taylor. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Let's phrase this delicately, okay? Might have had a better option instead of throwing the football into double coverage. He was blanketed. I was surprised that he went his direction. Yeah, should have thought maybe about the check down, take the completion, keep moving. Again, now it's Taylor on second and 10. Now he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. It's been that kind of a day so far throwing the football. It just seems like nothing going right offensively. Yeah, it's a catch that should have been made pure and simple. And look, everything else that goes into running a good pass route, throw it all out if you don't catch the ball. Been that kind of game throwing the football so far. Nothing going right offensively. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary now on third. Now they'll run on the draw. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. They'll try and throw for it with Taylor. And he's got his man. It's the tight end play. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. They get 25 yards out of that one. And it'll be a Buffalo first down. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Red zone opportunity. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. So that'll back him up five. Still first down. So now first and 15. From the gun, it's Taylor. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Second down now after the incompletion. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. And his throw is going to be incomplete.
And the seemingly endless drive continues. Now flags will come in. One of the Bills got going a little early. So that one will be accepted. Still third down. So here's third and 20, and with a long yardage, defense going with a nickel look. Here we go. One, nine. Throwing again, it's Taylor. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. My high school coach John Ford used to say all the time, if you're in a bad situation, laddie, don't compound it with a bad decision as well. And I think that's what we just saw there. Harassed in the pocket, and he throws into double coverage anyway. He called you Laddie? He called me Laddie, and that was the nicest thing he called me. And Hauschka's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. Well, in the grand scheme of things, it's likely not going to matter much, but at least they get themselves three points closer to respectability. And I don't know that they're going to feel a whole lot better about things because they've clearly been outplayed all game long. But, hey, no reason not to take the points when the opportunity presents itself. Now after the main field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And back onto the field now comes Devontae Freeman. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals. Just something magical about breaking that barrier. Now he's right there on the doorstep now. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage. So I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> He'll take this up just shy of the 40. Excellent display of footwork on that run. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. The Falcons on third down, five out of nine thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. A 20th carry now for Freeman. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. But sometimes, Brandon, there's just not a secret to how things get done. He's been running well all game long, and they continue to rely on him in this key situation. They told us they were going to rely on him. They have. He comes through there a big third down conversion. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Here's Freeman. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. 
at this stage of the game with a score where it is the key here stay in bounds and he did just that not by a huge margin but he stayed in and those come up in what we like to call winning edge meetings the things that you have to do late game situations kicking situations, doesn't matter what it is the things you have to do to win a game and that comes up in that meeting then you practice it They've got to be happy to see it executed, being able to stay in bounds and work the clock. And it's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. The punter Bosher on now as he gets this one away. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Back onto the field now comes the Bills offense. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. First and ten, it's Taylor over the middle and caught by the tight end, Clay. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Now Taylor to throw on second down. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. So it's Bill's football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. From the gun on third down, it's Taylor. Inside the 35. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. And that one results in 35 yards. On first down, it's Taylor. That is caught at the 7. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. That one goes for 24 yards. Taylor will throw again. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Great footwork there, Charles, to dot the eye, stay in bounds, get both feet in. He's probably thinking, though, man, I made a catch like that that close to the end zone. I should have scored. Yeah, there's always a regret when you're that close to the goal line. But let's go back to what you talked about before, getting his feet down. Would you say dotting the eye? Mm -hmm. I can cross the T as well. That was excellent footwork to get in bounds and make a great catch. Taylor, and he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Charles Clay, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bills get a bit closer. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone, short field. But now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. 
They're the rocked up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. Here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. So now what do you do as it comes back to the seven? I think you stick with your strategy. You've already told your team you're going for two. You dial up a different play. The only saving grace, a bit more room to operate if you're deciding to throw the ball especially. And they'll get set here looking for the two-point conversion. They're going to try and run here. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. And he will not make it to the goal line. The defense holds him here. And this is still a three-score game as the lead remains 18. So it would no doubt be a miracle comeback from here, but let's see what they can do starting with the onside kick. And a good job here by the Falcons. Their hands team able to recover it. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Freeman and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line it'll wind up being a loss of two and it'll be second and 12. yeah let me puff out my chest a little bit even though I'm not rooting for either team that was a really nice defensive play it's awfully fun to watch even in an offensive game Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Freeman again. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. One yard officially on the pickup, and it'll leave him with a third and 11. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone.
So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Falcons here as we say so long from Atlanta.